know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. This talk exposes W.C. Jameson's and Frederick Bean's fake conspiracy theories in their 1998 book, The Return of the Outlaw Billy the Kid, trying to explain away Brushy Bill's being declared an imposter. The information is from my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Imposter Hoax of Brushy Bill Roberts. In their 1998 book, The Return of the Outlaw Billy the Kid, True Believers, W.C. Jameson and Frederick Bean create conspiracy theories to rationalize rejection of Brushy Bill Roberts as Billy the Kid. This ploy was originally used by the Brushy Bill hoax's creators, William V. Morrison and C. L. Sonishin, for their 1955 book, alias Billy the Kid. See Talk 73, linked below, for their conspiracy theories. Jameson and Bean have conspiracies of historians, of Pat Garrett, of the coroner's jury, of the burial, of Pat Garrett's reward granting, of Fort Sumner townspeople, and of New Mexico tourism. For their conspiracy of historians, Jameson Bean copied their idol and backer, C. L. Sonishin. In his 2012 brushy backing book, Billy the Kid, The Lost Interviews, Jameson innocently recounted Sonishin's manipulation. Sonishin had told him that he'd warn Morrison to be prepared for historians trying to perpetuate what Sonishin called the status quo of the legend. That's what Sonishin called legitimate history. Sonishin had encouraged Jameson, originally in his English class in 1962, to do further work on the man Sonishin called William Henry Roberts, the hoax's made-up name for Brushy to mimic real Billy's William Henry Bonney. So, starry-eyed Jameson and Bean mouthed their mentor and accused a conspiracy of historians of maintaining the status quo, refusing to admit being wrong, and perpetuating myth and misinformation. They stayed. There exists a confederacy of Billy the Kid researchers and writers, an informal alliance composed of a number of adherents to the prevailing and accepted theories regarding the death of the outlaw. They then recycled Sonishin's fraud from alias Billy the Kid, which proclaimed in screeching capitals, There is no actual proof of the death of Billy the Kid. So, mesmerized, Jameson and Bean wrote, The alliance of historians dismissed Roberts. The truth is, however, their efforts were never supported by valid scientific and historical research. For their conspiracy of Pat Garrett, Jameson and Bean launched defamatory attacks on that lawman who knew Billy, killed him, and wrote a book about it. First, they pretend 
that there is no evidence of the killing. They lie that it is based only on, quote, the word of Pat Garrett, and that, quote, none of the so-called facts related to the death of Billy the Kid at the hands of Pat Garrett have ever been supported by concrete or even competent evidence. For proof, they make up discrepancies between Garrett's and Poe's books, and they accuse Poe of colluding to cover up the victim. They cite Morrison's meaningless hearsay claims that an unnamed cousin of Kip McKinney said Garrett killed someone else and kept it secret. That McKinney's grandson told Morrison that the kid got away and that Morrison's pardon petition attorney in 1950, Ted Andrus, got a phone call from an unnamed man who said he'd testify that McKinney told Garrett in a saloon in Uvalde, Texas, quote, that he had not killed anyone that night. Jameson and Bean conclude predictably, no credible evidence exists to indicate what actually happened in Pete Maxwell's bedroom around midnight on 14 July, 1881, or who was killed. Then, Jameson and Bean try character assassination. They claim the history of Billy the Kid is, quote, flawed and suspect because it's based on Garrett's 1882 book, The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid, which had errors proving he was, quote, a liar. In reality, except for Garrett's personal experience of tracking and killing Billy, his book, as written by ghostwriter Ash Upson, is mostly dime novel style fictions. Actual 20th century history books use primary documents like Billy's own writings and words and depositions of participants, which proved Brushy's total ignorance and mismatch. Jameson and Bean also claimed Garrett was a bad guy. They call him overrated, never succeeded in anything, and a man of questionable veracity and integrity who was an aspiring political figure who wanted to keep secret, killing the wrong man. In reality, Garrett's personality had nothing to do with whether he killed Billy, and made up is that he was an aspiring political figure and hadn't killed Billy and they hid the multiple identifications of Billy's body. Jameson and Bean also copied Sonishin's alias Billy the Kid fabrications that Garrett was denied the Billy the Kid reward money because of lack of a coroner's jury report and no proven corpse identity and was paid the reward by collusion of ring-eyed legislators. In reality, Sonishin had fake contents of the relevant documents, which actually stated that Garrett's reward payment had simply been delayed by the acting governor to await legislative conversion of past Governor Lou Wallace's private reward to a territorial one so he could be paid from territorial funds. See Talk 73, link below for the Sonish and Morrison reward payment fakery. For their conspiracy of the coroner's jury, whose report proving Billy was the corpse ended Brushy's hoax, Jameson and Bean make up that the inquest has been shrouded in confusion and mystery. They first focus on the jury's president, Milner Rudolph. Using John W. Poe's 1933 book, The Death of Billy the Kid, they cite Poe's going to Sunnyside to question him as its postmaster about Billy the Kid. From Poe's statement that Rudolph appeared nervous, Jameson and Bean make up that he was, quote, a friend of the kid and protective of the kid against lawmen, so gave misleading information. They also make up that Rudolph conspired with Garrett to make the kid seem, quote, officially dead. In reality, 
Milner Rudolph was a loyal Santa Fe ringite and Billy's enemy. In 1872, as territorial speaker of the House, he illegally aided the rings takeover of the legislature to block anti-ring bills, thus precipitating what I named the 1872 Legislature Revolt, the first anti-ring uprising. So Rudolph, like other ringites who experienced the regulators' anti-ring Lincoln County War freedom fight, would have wanted Billy dead. Also, Jameson and Bean made up that Rudolph specifically protected Billy from lawman Poe. In reality, Poe was doing reconnaissance as a stranger to the locals and hid being Garrett's deputy. Poe himself attributed the nervousness to Rudolph's being aware that the kid was in the area but afraid of endangering himself by broadcasting that. Jamison and Bean next take on the coroner's jury report itself. They fabricate. There is, in fact, no legal proof of the death of Billy the Kid. But their so-called proofs of no proof are absurd fictions. They claim the inquest was too fast. Why not? The killing was straightforward. The body was identified. Peter Maxwell gave an eyewitness account which supported justifiable homicide, and justifiable homicide was the verdict. They claim Garrett didn't put the body on public display. A lie. Their own book quotes Poe's statement about the townspeople's carpenter shop wake in which the 200 Fort Sumner residents who knew Billy saw his body. Jameson and Bean say the body should have been photographed, but they forgot it was 1881 on the frontier. People didn't have cameras. They recycle the Sonish and Morrison malarkey using old-timer A.P. Paco Anaya's lie that he was a juryman on a lost report, and Garrett then forged the known one. In reality, Anaya had no insider knowledge of the report and even confirmed Billy as the corpse he claimed to have buried. Jameson and Bean also lied to date, no one has ever seen the document. In reality, its photostatic copy is in their own bibliography in William Kelleher's 1957 book, Violence in Lincoln County. And the original had been located in Santa Fe Public Records in 1932 and 1951. Jameson and Bean Quibble about spelling of the signers' names and call the report a forgery by Garrett by repeating Paco Anaya's lie. In reality, Garrett, as the murder suspect, wouldn't have had a part in writing the report. Jameson and Bean claimed the report, quote, never made it to the official records of San Miguel County. This repeated the morrison sonishin scam of concealing that the original report was sent by its writer, Justice of the Peace Alejandro Segura, to District Attorney of the First Judicial District, William Breeden, meaning to Santa Fe, as Segura stated in the report. And Santa Fe is where it was subsequently found in Breeden's records. But for his scam, Morrison had searched for the report in Las Vegas, New Mexico, where it never was. They claim the coroner's jury report found by historian Maurice Garland Fulton was challenged and unverified. In reality, only hoaxing Morrison denied it, and Fulton had his 1951 copy of the report certified. For the conspiracy of the burial, Jameson and Bean make up 
there has long been uncertainty relative to whose remains, if anyone's, is buried at the Fort Sumner site. To be noted is that the site may be uncertain, but Billy Bonney being buried within the cemetery is certain. Jameson and Bean make up that the body was seen only by Garrett, Paul, McKinney, and, quote, two or three other people. In reality, Jameson and Bean hid identifications by the coroner's jurymen, Peter Maxwell, Delavina Maxwell, and 200 townspeople in their nighttime wake for Billy. They misrepresent Leon Metz, Garrett's biographer, in his 1974 book, Pat Garrett, The Story of a Western Lawman, as claiming that Garrett could have passed off the body. In reality, Metz's book confirmed that Garrett killed Billy. They repeat, Grand County journalist S.M. Ashenfelter's fake description of a swarthy bearded corpse in his July 23, 1881 Grand County Herald newspaper article, Exit the Kid. So ridiculously, with what they call scientific style, Jameson and Bean cite a book on so-called sexual maturity ratings to declare that fair beardless Billy couldn't change into Ashenfelter's corpse. That was supposed to mean that the body wasn't Billy's. But they forgot that Brushy's mistaken identity victim was Billy Barlow, who looked identical to him as Billy the Kid, meaning fair and beardless. They also hid that Ashenfelter's article was dime novel fiction, that his being in Silver City put him 250 miles from the burial, that he made up his stained dark corpse as Billy in disguise, and that he was positive Billy was the victim. Jameson and Bean add hearsay tales by non-historical people claiming a Mexican that looked like Billy had been shot or a Maxwell hired hand was shot or that the wagon carrying the casket had a, quote, armed guard so no one could see the body. Jameson and Bean end with a buckshot spray of the following conspiracy theories. All Fort Sumner residents were in a conspiracy. They tricked Garrett into thinking he killed Billy to protect Billy. In reality, this needs Garrett unable to recognize Billy, though he knew him well. All of New Mexico is in a conspiracy to protect tourism. If Billy was Texan brushy, quote, millions of dollars each year would be lost. So Governor T.J. Mabry conspired with the historians and descendants in the 1950 pardon hearing to call Brushy an imposter for economic reasons. Also, TV presenter and Lincoln County resident Sam Donaldson conspired to promote tourism when he did an undated primetime live program titled Who Was Billy the Kid and Left Out Brushy. Also, the Lincoln County Heritage Trust photo analysis denying a match of Brushy to Billy was a conspiracy to protect tourism. In reality, and ironically, five years after the return of the outlaw Billy the Kid came out, a corrupt New Mexico governor backed Brushy for his self-promoting gigantic Billy the Kid case hoax, fully willing to hand to Texas New Mexico's iconic Old West history, and none other than W.C. Jameson became one of his media mouthpieces for this intended destruction of New Mexico tourism. Talks to follow will present and debunk the years-long Billy the Kid case hoax when it was just me standing between old imposter Brushy Bill 
and his being crowned as Billy the Kid. <laughs> <laughs>